Namaste friends, this is Samir, the storyteller. Today I am taking you to a workshop of carpet and dairy making. Yes, the origin of this particular uh, art of dairy and carpet making can be traced far back to the ritualistic floor painting in India. In the Hindu and tribal communities, drying pattern on walls and home floors was believed to be a powerful religious charm that would ward off evil spirits and energies from their house. Altogether, there are six process or steps we can say we have to follow the dyeing, playing and spinning, weaving, washing, trimming and packaging and exporting. So here I am at one of the spot where all these uh, cotton threads and even the woolen threads are hanging to get dry. Yes, they have been gone through the process of dyeing. So the first step is the dyeing and they do use all the organic natural colors with the blend of the different colors. Here is the color making process. Yes, this gentleman is doing the hard work so trying to get the best colors and then the other man is also spinning that particular wheel and then warming the atmosphere and keeping the temperature appropriate in which these colors can be boiled up and then the cotton and the woolen threads can be put in those colors and they do take them out and later on they do put them under the sunlight to get dry so that is the first step of the dye. Here you can see that they do use the firewood to make the proper temperature, not using the gas cylinder and all those. So it is the authentic way in which they are doing and it used to be even into the olden days also. Here it is the cold water. So once they go to dry and then they do wash them again with these and here they put them in this way the different different colors different different sizes of those threads because later on they will be going on the second process of the plying and the spinning where majorly the women do play the key role here we have reached on the step of the plying and the spinning The important thing is that in these village areas, some of the organizations, they have made a society kind of the thing and they are providing the good number of the employment opportunities to the villagers. Yes, that is the best part and in this particular workshop, I am surprised to see that there are majorly the women who are working at here. So, I will say that this particular society is much more focusing on the women empowerment also and ladies are doing their work with a great enthusiasm as well as the great zeal because they, they know the art particularly. So in the beginning I was talking about that how the origin or how the art started. So patterns on these dairies or the carpet can be the different they can be uh, geometrical pattern, they can be the other patterns also. Decorations, basically the inspiration of those patterns are from the decorations on the floor in the olden days. And they were called as Rangoli, Mandana and Kolam in the houses in India. And the patterns were drawn as a prayer to invoke the deities and ask for protection from negative energies. In this way, the merging of religious belief system and love of art and decoration gave rise to an intricate art where the homes became the canvas. In many records of the 19th century, Dari is referred to as Dari or Satranji 
S A T R A N J I in the northern India and Jamkhani in southern India. The earliest surviving relic of the Indian Dari's or the carpet can be now be seen in the British Museum in London. Yes, and the carbon dating puts it between first and third century AD. Surprised? Yes, cotton and the woolen. These are the two main material which are used for making of this beautiful floor covering, wall hanging and the artisans they do have the artistic hand and eyes and really they are very good at that art not only the male but the female are also making so designs are like a kind of an inspiration so i will say that if you do have these kind of the art pieces in your house that particularly giving much more energies the positive energies or the positive vibes and that is the reason that from india in the olden days there was such a large number of the export used to be done but slowly with the time the things are changing and they are facing such a great challenges because of the machinery craft as well as moving to profitable professions of these families because as if they are not getting the proper prices for their artistic work then in that case really there is a challenge so these are the two big challenge and even the export is also slowly getting down there are several reasons i'm not going on them but look at the hand of this particularly the lady how beautifully she is doing one by one and then it is a complete screen of the threads and then they do have a particular instrument known as the panja as of the five spikes are there and they do put it nicely and the lady is making the roll of these and a lot of spinning wheels are there then the process is the washing it is a tough and the rigorous process you can see two gentlemen are doing over there it is a cotton one so patterns as we have discussed that even they do have the tree of life even elephants and then hunting scenes also because not only the normal families but even the royals we do talk about the moguls or if we do talk about the maharajas or the kings of india then also you do find that in their houses also in their palaces also in even in their bedroom in the dining areas even into the guest room we do have the records and the photographs of the time that there used to be the beautiful beautiful dairy making so Jaipur King Sawai Ram Singh II was the pioneer in this line to give the proper space to all these artisans families and that is the reason that in the nearby areas of the Jaipur and in other parts of Rajasthan also we do find but majorly I will call it that in the areas of Jaipur and then in the Madhya Pradesh state of India we do find there are many corporations or I will call them as the societies uh, who are trying to give the job to people are doing the good job then it is the next process of the trimming it is not that much easy process it is one of the complicated processes because this is going to give a finishing touch to these beautiful rugs or you can call them carpet cotton carpet woolen one and even we do have the jute one also j-u-t-e jute and so it is really a very very hectic and very important process of the trimming which these ladies are doing beautifully with their scissors and then they do have such a big store the lady is busy in some kind of the stitching because as there is some demand to come of the different sizes or uneven sizes because generally the sizes are very sim simple like 4 by 6 then 6 by 9 9 by 12 and even smaller and the bigger also but there are some customized sizes also then they do make the orders accordingly very steady and the skilled hands are there of these women yes so we are reaching at the final process which is packaging and then the exporting so in any part of the world you are there but 
I will request you as a tour guide as well as a storyteller that please have a great respect for the art and the artistic object and the artistic things because ultimately what we can give to our upcoming generation that's the important thing and these things which can be passed from generation to generation hope you like the information as well as the video so please subscribe my channel and keep exploring thank you so much for watching the video